Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make these fitted patchwork jeans for your stuffed animal. These are super popular right now and are perfect for fall, so let's get started! So to make these jeans patchwork, I'm obviously going to need at least two different kinds of denim fabric. These were cut off of, I believe, my grandma's jeans because she always needs to get hers shortened. And it's perfect because one of them is a lighter blue and the other is a darker denim. I'm going to mix these two together to give that patchwork, multiple color jean look. If you just want to make normal skinny jeans, obviously you can skip this step. But now I need to cut the sides of these pant legs so they can open up. And now I'm cutting out squares of this material, which I'm going to eventually fill with the lighter blue denim. If you want though, you can always just sew the other fabric directly on top of this one. Now I'm grabbing the lighter blue denim and cutting out a square of that, making sure to make it a lot bigger than the cutout I've already made. I obviously didn't do a great job of that, but I'm going to fill it in with more fabric later. I'm going to repeat that a few more times so I have a nice color variety. And I wanted the colors to be kind of even, so for the other piece I cut out some really big pieces. This is great to do if you have a ton of little jean scraps you don't know what to do with. I know I'm working with two really big pieces here, but you can sew together a lot of little scraps to make your main piece. Now I need to sew these patches together, and for some of the edges I want a nice clean attachment, so for that I flipped the fabric good side to good side and sewed along that edge. And I actually liked this little frayed bottom edge, so instead of tucking it in, I'm just going to sew right over the top of that. And afterwards it should look like this. Now for this rectangle piece, I'm going to do a similar thing. I know I don't show it here, but I flipped it good side to good side along this left edge, sewed that down, and now I'm going to flip it up because I want a clean edge on the top too. Then I sewed straight across there, and that last edge I just sewed right on top so the frayed edges still show. You can sew these together using whatever method you want, or you could even mix and match like I did, but it's all up to you. Now this piece is done, I can do the same thing to the other piece. After sewing in those squares, it should look like this, and now I can actually cut them into the shape I need to make these pants. This only involves one pattern that I'll link down below, but there is this little tab on one of the sides that you want to have sticking out to cut out one of the pieces, but for the other one, you'll want to fold it in. And you'll also want your two pieces mirror images of each other. So as you can see, one side of my pattern has text on it, and I'm cutting that out with one piece. And for my second piece, I'm flipping it over to the blank side. After both of those are cut out, the next step would be to hem this bottom edge. But since I actually kept the original hem from these jeans, I really only have to hem this little part, so I'm going to do that first. You could also leave the bottom edge frayed, which is another kind of style of jeans. And I actually ended up leaving it like that for my other piece. Next, I need to hem this top edge, and I'm just folding it over about a quarter of an inch, since it doesn't have to be really big to fit an elastic or anything. I'm going to do the same thing to the other piece, and sew that down using a straight stitch. After that, I'm going to flip the pieces good side to good side, and right now I'm just going to focus on the curves that are a little bit bigger. As you can see, this one is not as steep as the other one, and this is going to be the back of the pants. And now I'm going to sew these curves together, but I'm going to leave a little opening for the tail. I don't always add tail holes, but if your stuffed animal does have a tail, this is great to add, because it'll also kind of help the pants stay up. After sewing that together, it should look like this. And next I'm going to the piece with that little triangle sticking out. And now that I think about it, this triangle isn't really necessary, so you can leave it off. But whether you have it or not, you'll want to fold in that edge to hem it. And I actually should have done this to the other curve as well, but I forgot, so if you want a clean edge there, you'll want to hem that. After that extra piece is hemmed, I'm going to fold the whole thing in half, good side to good side, and line up the curves. Then starting from the bottom, I'm going to sew up, just on the curved part, until I get to that hemmed edge. This part needs to stay open because I'm going to add the button around here and that's how we'll tighten the pants. So after I've sewn up about halfway, it should look like this. And I already turned it inside out, so I need to turn it inside out again so the bad side's facing out. And then match up the inner sides of the pant legs. Now I can pin this together and sew a straight stitch along where I've pinned. Now the pants are almost done, so I'm going to try this on my stuffed animal. And I quickly realized it was way too loose, especially on the sides. So to tighten this, I'm going to turn the pants inside out again, and sew a straight line about a quarter inch away from the sides of the pant leg, and that'll take that side in a little bit so the pants are tighter. I needed to do this to both sides. I have adjusted the printable patterns to be smaller, but since every stuffed animal is different, you may still have to make little adjustments like these. After making both sides tighter, I tried it back on and it was still a little bit loose, but I just left it because I haven't added the button yet, and being able to close the front of the pants will make them tighter. So now I actually have to add the buttonhole and button. So I'm first overlapping the open part of the pants to check where I want to put the buttonhole. 
and I'm using pins to mark where I want to put the hole and the button. As you can see, I needed to overlap this a lot to make the pants a lot tighter. I'll be right back to sew the buttonhole on using my sewing machine. Unfortunately, I have not mastered sewing buttonholes on my sewing machine, so it didn't come out great. I ended up having to cut it a little past the hole I made, so there will be some frayed edges. But there's already some frayed parts on the jeans, so I thought why not let the buttonhole match. Now I can finally sew on the button. I wish I had one of those buttons that you actually see on jeans. This was just a normal silver kind of looking button I found, but it didn't really look quite right in the end. But I didn't really have any better button options, so I just left it. And you'll notice in the intro, I tried covering the button up with my stuffed animal shirt. It did at least tighten the pants though, and that's what I was going for. Now I'm going to grab my needle and thread and sew the button on where I marked it with a pin. Once I've gone back and forth through the holes a few times, I can tie the thread off in the back. And now these jeans are finally done! I'm pairing this with this kind of burnt orange sweater I made in a video last year. And these are just great to go with really any kind of top. Like I said before, I'm covering the top of the jeans with the sweater, just because the button area looked a little weird to me. But other than that, I think it turned out great! I know a few people have been requesting pants without an elastic so it's not so flared out. So here's a pattern and technique you can use for that, and you can always watch my pattern video to make your own patterns for your stuffed animal. The secret to these is just making them really tight though, so it might take some trial and error. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time! Bye!